Good afternoon, everybody. Steven from Break Free Homestead. This is my wife, Kathleen. Hey. We saw a cool video on Four Kids in a Farm about 10 questions for homesteaders, and we thought we would do the same. Yeah, so I guess we'll just go through the questions and we'll give our answers and then uh, see how it goes. They're probably going to be pretty different. <laughs> so the first question is, what got you into homesteading? I'll let you start. I think I, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and uh, so when we lived in Arizona, I was on YouTube watching it and I wanted to get chickens there and and we weren't allowed to because we lived in a cookie cutter house. Um, so we just couldn't do it. But then uh, I was really watching Lumna Acres a lot and kind of weird that we moved to New Hampshire now because he's like not that far away, but um, yeah. A lot of his videos inspired me um, to be more self-sufficient and, you know, raise our kids somewhere that's not just a, a concrete block and, you know, they can just sit on their tablets and and do nothing, so. Uh, ma, for me, it's a lot different. Um, I really wasn't even into the whole thing. I just kind of let him do his thing and I followed along a little bit. I helped with the chickens. Um, we chose New Hampshire because I wanted to come back here because my family lives here, but um, I've only recently got into everything else and I think it's just because he's kind of dragged me in, so. <laughs> yeah, the goats were her thing, so she headed that. Um, obviously I built a shelter, but she takes care of the goats and she picked them out for the most part and she named him Toby. <laughs> it's her. Uh, okay, question two. What's something you want to add to your homestead in 2020? Um, well, we already added goats, so that's, uh, I think the biggest thing, and turkeys, but um, I think probably the only other thing that we'll add this year, other than you might want to add more, is probably oh. pigs, um, just before winter. But. Yep. So the plan was we were going to do some spring pigs, and with the whole COVID thing, uh, it dro drove the uh, pig prices up, and they were pretty hard to find, um, almost like double the price, and we just really didn't want to mess with that. We got the turkeys at the same time. And we just decided to stick with the goats and the turkeys for now. And then we'll do winter pigs. And we'll see how that works. Hopefully it keeps the smell down. Our neighbors do winter pigs. We'll probably just try to do the same schedule as them. So, yeah. I mean, we can always add more. But right now, pigs is just the, uh, the only thing. Third question is, what's the most difficult lesson you've had to learn so far while homesteading? I'll say <laughs> the most difficult lesson so far has to be the backyard. We just came in here, we're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna get rid of these stumps and move some of this, and then we'll just make it flat and then plant some grass and it'll be good. But, you know, I kind of cut all the saplings down and then I, you know, dove head first into that and quickly realized I couldn't do everything by hand. So we hired an excavator um, to come out and flatten it, and it has still been a bunch of work. Uh, we have a playlist for that, transforming the backyard. We're still working on it, and drainage is a big thing, and it is muddy. Uh, yeah, for me, the most difficult thing, um, like I said, I'm still really new to getting involved in a lot of things, but probably just um, learning how to take care of the animals that we do have. Uh, I never was an animal person growing up. I didn't have animals other than like dogs and cats. So um, just learning like the ins and outs of what farm animals need, chickens, goats, turkeys now. But. Yeah, they always throw you a curveball. And if you don't know and you don't have a mentor close by, definitely you know, gets you confused sometimes and you try something and that might not be the issue and you have to just go a different direction and hope that works. 
The fourth question is, what's your favorite chore on the homestead? Favorite chore. Uh, I like letting the chickens out. <laughs> they, I'm like the chicken man. They follow me around. I'm cool for a few minutes until I throw them their food. They get all crazy. They scratch my ground. It's cool. And boss man comes out, running like a boss, letting everybody know. Um, for me, it's definitely taking care of the goats. Um, they were kind of my idea, my thing. Um, so with our four now, every morning I go down and let them out of their shed and feed them. And the girls help me, which is great. And uh, at night we put them away and feed them and they love to play. And so yeah, I think that's probably my favorite chore so far. Yeah. Hopefully the girls will get in the routine of that and help more and more. So that's what we're looking forward to. What's your favorite thing to grow? I'll let you answer that one first. Um, well, it's only our second year doing a vegetable garden. Uh, we learned a lot, I think, last year in regards to how it all works. <laughs> um, so uh, this year, I think we're doing a lot better uh, so far. I think probably my favorite thing is cucumbers. Um, that was probably our most successful last year too and I love cucumbers in the summer when it's hot and so do the kids so I think that's probably my favorite right now. Yeah I'd say tomatoes although we didn't really do too hot last year on tomatoes so we're doubling down on tomatoes a couple different kinds um, larger and smaller salad type tomatoes so our little one of our little ones likes tomatoes so Hopefully we get plenty of those. Uh, question six. What do you love most about the homesteading community? I'd say it's everybody being supportive, you know, giving advice. Um, you know, if you're new, they don't really care if you're new. There's no bad blood about you trying to, to bring in more animals like you're like it's a competition, you know. We all just support each other as we all grow and become, you know, better at farming or raising animals and, and gardening. Yeah, um, I probably can agree with that. Uh, the support definitely is there, um, even with local people that I know. Any questions that I've had about the chickens or or whatever, and I know other people in town that have them, um, they've given me advice without even second guessing it and I think that's been really good. Seventh question is your favorite meal that you make? Uh, my favorite meal that I make is definitely uh, marinated steak tips with macaroni salad and that could just be the pregnancy talking but I make macaroni salad like once every two weeks right now and then make enough to save it for leftovers so <laughs> for her not for me yeah. like, they're all gone when I get home so <laughs> that's always nice what about you? favorite meal you that I make what do I make you make a lot of breakfast yeah I don't cook breakfast I make the crazy breakfast like usually usually something exciting for the kids like Anything that can go in pancakes, basically <laughs> that. Bacon, eggs, breakfast burritos, fresh stuff. So, breakfast is good. What's your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday. Freaking Christmas! It's Christmas! You turn on Christmas music, I don't even care if it's Halloween. You put it on, you let her know, hey, Christmas is coming. Then you have a bunch of leverage on the kids. You say, hey, Santa Claus is watching. Elf's on the shelf watching you. Don't do it. It's a good time. And you get the lights. You put extra lights. Everybody can see the lights. And they're bright. I love Christmas too, but um, I think my favorite holiday is Halloween. Um, and I love it because my kids love it just as much as I do. I love decorating for Halloween. I love getting all dressed up for Halloween. Um, taking the kids trick or treating, uh, it's definitely, I think that's probably my favorite. Yeah, and usually it's not too cold yet. It's not frozen outside. Well, you've only been in New Hampshire for... Past two years, it's not <laughs> frozen outside yet. I've trick or treated in the snow before. 
California. Yeah. We'll see. But about we've been, that. We've been we'll, lucky we'll so far. Cross our fingers there. So last year it was like t-shirt weather it was nice. So is your homestead where you intend to settle permanently or are you looking to create a new one elsewhere? Uh we only have two <laughs> acres, so it's a you know, it's tough. We can definitely do a lot with where we're at now and who knows how far we'll expand. We definitely love our neighbors. They're awesome and super supportive. Um, so that would be a bummer to leave and land is super expensive right now. So I don't even think we could even, you know, it wouldn't even be possible to, to relocate for more land right now. But that's really what we would have to do. We'd have to get more land in town and something would have to change for that to happen, so. Yeah, I think we're pretty much on the same page with that. Um, we don't have any plans to create a new one anywhere else right now. Um, it definitely, the lack of land is a little bit difficult. We love our neighbors, but they're very close. Um, I would love more privacy someday if we could have it, but I also love our town. Um, I love where my kids go to school and I just really don't ever want to leave our town. Um, so I think we're probably here for the long haul. If anything, we might just have to expand our home to fit we're our, to build up. our growing family. We're but make a parking garage homestead. I think we're going to have to make the land make do yeah. for now. Yeah. Yeah. There goes my forest. Uh, last question. What are some homesteaders that you follow and enjoy learning from? Um, big one, obviously, that I spoke about earlier, Lumna Acres. Uh, super cool watching him grow and a lot of good advice there. Goldshaw Farm is another local guy right in Vermont. He's he's fun to watch. Um, who else? Homesteady, another East Coast guy there. Super awesome. And then uh, smaller people. Uh, you know, Four Kids in a Farm is awesome. The Mindful Homestead's another guy in New Hampshire that's smaller. Um, he's awesome to watch, so yeah. Of course, you know, Justin Rhodes too. They're on another level, but you know, they're fun to watch, so. Uh, I'm definitely super new to watching anybody on YouTube. Um, he's like always the the go to YouTube and watch a video when you need to know how to do something guy. Yep. I'm typically the, I'm gonna go read a blog to figure out how to do something person. So, um, but I think uh, recently I've started following a little bit more is Four Kids in a Farm. Um, Weedem and Reap has a lot of goat information, which has been Shout nice. out Arizona. Yes. Um, props to you guys for doing it in the desert. <laughs> It's one thing I did not want to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think those are the two that I'm probably learning the most from right now. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for watching everybody. We challenge you guys to answer the 10 questions down below. We'll drop that in the description. And if you would, drop down below, hit that like and subscribe button. We do new updates every Friday, guys. Thanks for watching.